everyone. Welcome to Hawkridge Systems Digital User Conference for 2022, D2M in Motion. We're excited to spend the day with you sharing a packed agenda around the latest in design, engineering, and manufacturing technologies. I'm Damon Tordini. I'll be your host for this morning's general session. We've got an incredible program lined up for you today, presented by subject matter experts and industry leaders, and of course, some fantastic Hawkridge Systems customers. We'll be looking at new technologies, answering your questions, and at the, the end of today's program, uh, we'll be raffling off some exciting prizes. Throughout the day, we'll be running more than 20 breakout sessions covering tech tips, tricks, novel applications for a huge range of tools, including SolidWorks CAD, analysis software, additive manufacturing, and much more. And of course, we'll be looking at the technology platforms that help tie it all together, including 3D Experience. We're currently broadcasting to all of you out there via YouTube Live, as well as our digital conference platform. So whether you're spending the day with us in our general session, our partner booths, or on YouTube, we invite you to ask those questions and share your feedback with all of our presenters, either to give us your support or maybe just keep us on our toes. So to kick things off, we invite you to give a shout out to your hometown and the engineering projects that you're proud to have been working on in 2022. Our theme for this year's event is D2M in motion, meant to highlight how these tools are helping design the latest products in transportation and mobility, health and fitness, and of course, mobile devices, and how more and more engineers are using these tools on the go. So to help us set the mood, let's take a look at how some of our Hawkridge Systems team members have been enjoying their summer of 2022 in motion. stuff. And before we continue with the rest of today's program, I'd like to take a minute to introduce Hawkridge Systems President and CEO Dale Ford to share a special welcome message for all of our customers and attendees. Hi Dale, it's great to have you with us today. Thanks again for taking some time out of your busy schedule. No problem, Damon. I'm, I'm really excited to be here to, uh, to kick off our, our third annual uh, D2M event. So, you know, welcome to everyone uh, to our premier conference uh, of the year. You know, our team is, is always puts a lot of time and energy into this, uh, into this excellent event. We go above and beyond to try to make it uh, educational and interesting uh, for our customers. You know, our goal is to try to make this the best event you will go to all year. Uh, I sure hope you'll enjoy the day, you know, as you move between uh, our, our keynote speakers, um, our, uh, our breakout sessions, you know, our exhibitor booths, and, and certainly the interactive spaces that are, that are part of this conference. You know, at, at Hawker Systems, we aim to be the authority around the solutions we offer and, and where people can come to learn about the products and services that we represent. You know, in the end, we want to be the primary source for answers about your engineering design and, and manufacturing processes. You know, selfishly, and of course, I am uh, I'm a little biased when I say this, uh, we think we've developed a team that, that we believe is the most capable in the industry, you know, truly a world-class team. And we certainly hope you see that today as really 20 members of our team present their experience uh, and expertise in sessions that, that are really uniquely developed by us for this conference. The new release of, of SOLIDWORKS is at the heart of our content, as always. Um, it's hard to believe now that we are actually on SOLIDWORKS 2023. Uh, there's so much good stuff in this new release that I, that I know a lot of you have been waiting for and excited about, uh, and I'm extremely excited about it as well. But know, also know that Dassault Systems has, uh, has he invested heavily uh, in uh, the 3D Experience platform, bringing us even more technology to solve even more of your problems. You know, in Hawk Ridge, the systems has continued to invest right alongside of Dassault, adding you know, skill sets and knowledge around DS's you know, ever-expanding portfolio of technology. You know, our commitment to your success is, 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 is ongoing. Uh, as we continue to bring you different ways to help, uh, whether you know that be self-paced uh, learning, uh, our very popular Ask an Expert session, you know, or our services partnership. You know, I said this last year, but the, the collective knowledge we have as a company around the solutions we represent 
really is second to no one. You know, and I couldn't be prouder of our team and what they produce for all of you. And again, I sure hope you like what you see today. You know, from our last show at this time uh, in October 21, you know, we, we continue to thrive, you know, and grow as a company. Uh, I shared with you then that we were about uh, 310 employees in total. Um, and today we stand just about 450 employees, which is, which is crazy growth for sure. You know, we completed four acquisitions since our last show. Uh, we completed our acquisition of Design Point in, de in December last year. Uh, so welcome to you know, all of our, uh, our Design Point customers. Uh, in addition to the, the awesome customers we received as you know, a part of that acquisition, we also brought on 40 or so incredible people, which has really just been fantastic for all of us. Also, our footprint uh, of where we do business expanded again in, into the Northeast uh, and, and officially made us a technology provider you know, from coast to coast in the United States. So you know, that, is, that is awesome and something that uh, we've been aspiring to accomplish you know, for a very long time. Uh, in addition to that, at the end of September, this, this last September, uh, we acquired uh, Access Manufacturing. So again, welcome to all of the Access Manufacturing customers too. You know, this is our 18th acquisition since we were founded back in 1996. Access uh, has 12 people who, who we are being onboarded into our company this month. Uh, in addition, Access does business up and down the East Coast. So again, we're expanding uh, uh, our footprint of where we do business to a significant portion of the East Coast, and now a significant portion of the United States uh, and Canada, with 30 offices in total. As you may recall, we have, uh, we have made two strategic partnerships and investments in the last couple of years, uh, one with a Solid Professor uh, and one with Athena 3D. Uh, for those of you that, are, that aren't familiar with Solid Professor, uh, Solid Professor is a leading provider of on-demand video training for SOLIDWORKS CAD uh, and engineering design in general. Uh, through our partnership with them, we've been, we've been offering the entire Solid Professor, the Solid Professor video training catalog to our subscription service customers. Now, it has gone extremely well, uh, and Solid Professor has really continued to flourish, partly due to our relationship with them. The collective efforts and investments made by Hawkridge and Solid Professor has showed nice improvements to the platform overall, and some significant content additions, mostly focused around SOLIDWORKS, you know, for our collective customers. I continually get great feedback from all of you around Solid Professor, and as of yesterday, our customers have watched almost 550,000 training videos in total since we started working with them, which is, which is pretty amazing number to me. Athena 3D is a world-class 3D printing service bureau, and, and our partnership with them brings you that service as part of your subscription as well. Uh, as part of our partnership with an investment with uh, Athena 3D, you know, they are set to open a new facility in Q1 next year to expand their capabilities and capacity to meet really the growing demand they are seeing from all of you. I would really like to acknowledge the support of our uh, platinum sponsors, uh, Dassault Systems, SolidWorks, HP, uh, Mark Forged, uh, uh, DriveWorks, CamWorks, uh, and, and of course, Solid Professor and Athena 3D. Uh, we wouldn't be able to put on a show like this without their help, and it's excellent to have such great partners. Uh, you can see them at, uh, in our other sponsors in our exhibitor section in the conference. A big shout out to our keynote speakers as well. Again, without you, uh, we definitely couldn't put on a show like this for our customers. Another big thank you to the entire Hawkridge team for all the time and energy they put into creating this, this, this event and, and some of the great sessions you know, for our customers as well. And thank you to all of our current customers and our future customers, really for taking the time to attend this event. Uh, to our current customers, thank you all for the trust you've put in us and, and absolutely thank you for your business. You know, we ho honestly hope everybody learned something new uh, in, in here today, which is the entire point of doing this. Uh, know though that we are always gonna be available to you uh, to help you understand what is possible, really as you push the boundaries in your own, vis in your own business. But please feel free to reach out to us as we'd be more than happy to, to help whenever and however we can. Finally, uh, seeing us continue to grow and, and, and evolve in order to help even more people is really so rewarding uh, and so humbling for me, but it's directly connected to our mission of being a company everyone can be proud of, really a world-class provider of technology solutions for our customers. So thank you all for the, support, the opportunity you've given us to do what we love for so long. Uh, but no, we also know we have a lot of work to do to, to continue in that pursuit of being world-class, but also know we get up every day thinking about that as a group of people. That's all I have for you today, Damon. I hope everybody enjoys the show. I'm sure they will, Dale, and thanks again for your time. Appreciate it.
You know, it's true what Dale said. I'm really proud to welcome so many new faces to the Hawk Ridge Systems family this year. Our customers surprise us constantly with the new innovations they bring to life and the leadership they show in their fields. And it's truly a privilege that we get to be a part of that. Uh, in fact, a few of those customers have graciously agreed to lend us some of their time for this year's conference to help us understand their mission and the technologies that are critical to making it happen. Our first guest this morning is on a mission to improve education. Dr. Wade Larson has spent years working at the forefront of employee training, both in the field and in the office, with new technologies like virtual reality in his current role at Wagstaff Engineering. I recently caught up with Wade from our training facility in Costa Mesa, California to get his take on the future of skill building at engineering firms like his. Hey, good morning to you, Wade. Uh, thanks for taking some time out of your day to uh, visit with us and introduce yourself to the Hawk Ridge audience. Hey, no, thanks for having me. This is, uh, this is a pleasure. Now, for those not familiar with Wagstaff, of course, you've been a customer of Hawk Ridge Systems and Quest Integration prior to that. What what do you guys produce? What industry do you operate in? So we're in the aluminum industry, and it's um, we're we're in the early phase, right? We're in the early stage of the uh, production. Um, so we are in the aluminum casting manufacturing side of things. So we make uh, we make the products, we make the equipment that make ingots and billets. We make things so other people can make things. We make really large equipment, really big equipment, very specialized equipment for other manufacturers uh, throughout the world. In fact, uh, most of our stuff, about 65 to 70 percent of our uh, of our product goes overseas. Yeah, I can imagine pretty much everybody has a need for aluminum billets at one point. Uh, so what is your role in the, the design and manufacturing of these casting systems? So my role is Chief Human Resources Officer. So I've got a team, a pretty small team when you consider how many employees that we have. Uh, we have uh, just under 500 employees and I've got a small team uh, that we've work, worked together to really meet the needs of the managers, the employees to really help them to be successful. And a lot of the ways that we have done that, uh, we've really tied together not just the HR systems and focused on automation, but we've also tied together the training side of things as well. So while we're not technical we're not engineers, we're not experts on the production side. We've tried to work with the experts to really put into place those, those um, uh, elements to help facilitate that and accelerate their learning so they can do well at uh, what they need to do. So as part of that process, uh, what we've tried to do is identify what are the tools that they're using, what are their learning capabilities, and what can we do to help accelerate that learning so we can get them up to proficiency faster. And as part of that, one of the tools that we did, we uh, identified one of our, our engineering managers some time ago. We we're making some adjustments around and I said, you know, what? Let, let me see if I can uh, entice him to come join my team. Now, unusual to have an engineer, a mechanical engineer, especially one with almost 25 years of experience to come join my team in HR. Uh, but I asked him to come join me with training and that, uh, that really created an emphasis to say, how can I have this type of an individual focus on helping us to accelerate that learning and that uh, that performance for the entire organization. And it's really made a huge difference. Yeah, accelerated employee skills and development is obviously really important. And I imagine, you know, training employees on how to use design software and things that you know, pretty typical to use a training facility like this. What kind of systems and training environments are you guys using? So when we take a look at, uh, I mean, we've got all kinds of systems. But I know that on the engineering side, they use, uh, I mean, SolidWorks is one of those those core products. And uh, I mean, they, they use attachments, you know, DriveWorks and some other specialty items as well. But when we take a look at SolidWorks, I mean, that's that's bread and butter, right? And some of the, uh, some of the, uh, Kids coming out of, of COVID, I say kids just in general, but some of the new graduates coming out, uh, we presume that they're going to be uh, at least you know, have, know what they're doing within within SolidWorks. And we recognize that you know, there's a range of capability and skill set when they're coming out. Now, when we apply that variable skill set in SolidWorks combined with the specialty products that we have, I mean, these guys are not going to have any idea what we're making. In fact, most mechanical engineers that come to us from any other organization have no idea what we're what we're talking about because we have very specialized products. Nobody else makes this stuff uh, over here. And so, what we've uh, what we found as part of the challenge is, yeah, welcome to SolidWorks, which again, it's become more mainstream uh, with experienced engineers, but not new and you know new engineers. But really, our products. 
helping them to understand not just what it is and how it's designed, but also how it works, the mechanics inside and out, but not just the pieces, but where does it fit into the bigger scale of operation? What do they do, right? How do these machines work? What's the greater, you know, what, what, where does it fit within the greater scheme of things? That became a big challenge for us uh, to try and help them to get the bigger picture without having to fly them over to Bahrain or, or somewhere else like that to, to just see how it works. That was a challenge. Yeah, there, there's definitely a limit to what you can learn in a classroom environment for sure. So how did you address that challenge to go beyond using a software tool and, and explaining really what is going to be like on the day when you're participating in a you know, manufacturing operation. So one of the latest, uh, one of the latest and greatest opportunities that we've had is uh, really implementing VR. Uh, we've uh, toyed with the idea. I've seen VR goggles appear you know, in the previous years. They showed up, said, "Yeah, you know, we're toying with some ideas to use with clients." Said, all right, so what do you have in mind? And they said, hey, if we sent these to our clients, you know, over in India, wherever, then could we have them connect with us and we can walk walk them through some technical services, uh, you know, remotely? I'm like, that's a great idea. Pandemic hits and, you know, can we try this stuff? They tried it. I'm not sure where they got to, but I'm the kind of person that does ready, fire, aim. Let's go figure this stuff out. So my, uh, you know, my manager, Casey, he's, he's like, you know what? I, I just found out that these VR goggles work with SolidWorks. I said, cool. How does it work? I don't know yet. I said, okay. So what can you do with it? I don't know yet. All right. How much does it cost? A thousand bucks. I'm like, then buy them. Let's just do it. And so we, and so we bought them and uh, he went to town. It's, let's go buy them and figure this stuff out. So over the course of the past year and a half, I mean, you know, early on, he's like, hey, all this stuff loads into SolidWorks. It's not that hard. We go in, we grab it, these, and then you can play around with these things, right? You go in, grab these things, see it up and down. You have these 3D visuals, but then we can start to take apart all of our pieces, all of our big, all of our, uh, all of our big products. And then for, you know, for new employees, for them to not just see it, but then visually take these pieces apart, that's some cool stuff because some of these things we don't work on all the time. For them to understand how one component works with the other, that's some cool stuff. Well, pretty soon you can start to visualize these things. Well, from that, uh, from, from there, Casey went ahead and built one of our cast houses, right? One of these big giant cast houses in a virtual world. So now you can go take a virtual tour of our cast house. You don't have to be in there. You don't have to be in the, in the facility. You can walk around and see where all the machines are, see what they do, see what the, see how they operate and how they work in a virtual environment. Not right. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not that hard. Now I can send anybody anywhere to, to, to go do this in the virtual, in the virtual world. So this is just one example of where we're at. Now that's on the training side. So what has it done for us? Well, it's helped us to accelerate the onboarding process for new employees. Uh, but now where are we taking that to the next level? Well, it makes sense for us to apply it to the production side. We've been egging them on in production. It's like, come on guys, this is this is some cool stuff. You, imagine how much time you can save if you can load in your specs into the virtual world and start to see if this stuff can actually be built. The ultimate side is, I mean, how many times do we have the engineers and the welders get, you know, that have conflict, right? That you send it down to fabrication and the fabricator says, like, you can't build this. It, it looks good on paper, but you can't actually build this thing. Imagine the, the um, how much time and energy could be saved if uh, in, in just, just before it sends it down to production, if you have the welder and the engineer get together in the VR world and say, let's take a look at this thing and if, if it can actually be built. Cool stuff. So anyway, that's where we're at today, um, just on, on the design side. I'll share a little bit more on production next. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, it sounds like you're really taking the concept of using a 3D model to, you know, verify a mechanical design process to the next level because of how much you can interact with it. Um, what do you believe has been the biggest impact in all those different ways that you're utilizing that technology? Just thinking, out, I mean, just thinking, um, uh, hey, there's got to be a better way. How many of us in manufacturing just keep on doing what we do because that's the way we've always done it? And I mean, we have all this technology that's around us and the technology is cheap. Let's be honest, the technology is cheap. How do we load this thing up? We've got the computer, we plug in these VR goggles. Oh, now the VR goggles, are, I mean, we've, we've got the old ones that are, are wired, right? Now they've got the wireless ones for 800 bucks. Not, I mean, this is not, it's not that difficult. Crank them up and let's go. And it's not, I mean, we've been, we've had Oculus now for how many years has that been out on the market? It's, it's not new technology. 
And the question is, why aren't we doing this mainstream? You imagine how many hours we can save, how much money can we save by adopting new technology? It goes along with anything else in automation. We keep duct taping all this old equipment together because we said, well, it's going to make, it's going to, we're going to save money by keeping the old equipment running. No, we're not because we have to spend so much time and energy and money fixing the machines. The machine goes down. We keep, have to manufacture our own parts because they don't make it anymore. We're not saving money. We're spending an inordinate amount of money by keeping the old stuff, the old, uh, keep uh, continuing to work. Replace it, do it gain the efficiencies, and that's where VR comes in. This is where we shifted to production. I mean, we've been, we, uh, Lincoln and others have had virtual welding machines for years. And we use this example. So we're, we're that, uh, been pushing this one for a long time. We're finally at the cusp of saying, all right, now what, let's bring these in. And of course, if I talk to the welders and the welding managers, they're like, we have no space. We have no room. We have no need for a virtual welder. Okay, well, we're over at Doxark uh, about a month ago, and I said, just come join me for a bit. Of the manufacturing engineers, uh, a couple others with me, said, just give it a shot. That the whole hood, right, everything looks, feels, the only thing that we're missing is the smell, and I'm sure doTERRA will come out with an oil, essential oil that'll smell like weld, but uh, <clears throat> at some point. But they share with me an example where we had a couple of welders, so they're trying to go fast track to, to learn, learn the welds and, and bring them up to speed over and over and over. Well, their version of fast tracking was to set them up with a, with a high-end welder, <clears throat> a welder three, and just go. It's not the methodology. Their version was just burn wire. It's not how you train, but their version was burn wire. It took them three weeks, three weeks. They couldn't figure out why the guy couldn't figure it out. Three weeks. After three weeks, they're like, well, you know, it's because he's looking at it incorrectly. If we could figure that out, that would have saved us three weeks. The employees three weeks, the trainers three weeks, all the cost of materials, wire, gas, etc. Right, I'm going like once we saw this virtual welder where you could go in, you can see it, and the thing looks realistic. I mean, it's virtual, but we could go do it. We could figure it out. We could see it. We could have figured that out in ten minutes. Why it wasn't working? Yeah, sure, we could figure out in the real world why it wasn't. Then we could go put on the simulator and figure it out in ten minutes. The cost of those three weeks was about twenty percent of the cost of the of the virtual welder. We could have saved a lot of time, energy, and money by just slapping it on the virtual welder. So why, what's the good of that overall? Is it replacing real welding? No, it's not. It's enhancing and accelerating. And that's the whole use of this VR model. It's not to replace, it's to enhance. And that's the beauty of this whole, this whole thing. It sounds to me like you found so many different use cases for this where it, like building essential skills is important, but and, and training up team members that have you know geographic limitations, but it sounds like you really are using this technology to troubleshoot and to solve problems on the fly as well. And uh, I mean, it almost sounds like you think this is the future of training and education. It has to be. It, it really does. With how few of people that we're going to have here, I mean, this this uh, this thing where we're all searching for uh, additional employees, right? This this uh, shortage is not going to go away, and we know that. It, uh, it is here to stay. It's, it's going to be that way for good. Um, it's going to be there for our generation, period, end of story. So what happens is we have to figure out how to do more with fewer people because we cannot afford to keep doing business the same way that we've always been doing it. Uh, we've got to figure out how to do things leaner, faster, better. And that means automation and, and adopting technology, not to replace employees, that's just to keep our doors open with the fewer employees that we're going to have available. And with that, as we adopt new automation and technology, we have to upskill our current employees and we're going to have to bring talent in and develop them on up. So we're going to need the tools to make that happen. We have the technology. We have these, these, these great tools and we can't keep doing it the same old way because we're going to get the same old results. If we want to keep up with the technology and be on the cutting edge, if we want to have the resources that our customers want, that's what's going to create those unique selling propositions. That's what's going to be the value add that people want to come to us with. Otherwise, we're not going to have what our customers want. We want to remain competitive. We're going to have to figure this stuff out. And this is going to be one of those opportunities to help enhance that. Thanks, Wade. It really sounds like you and the rest of the team at Wagstaff are a true leader in this space. And we really thank for you for your time today. We're excited to see where you go with it in the near future. 
Well, thanks. I appreciate the opportunity to share some ideas and uh, look forward to um, seeing what else is out there. So thank you very much. Well, for those of you who thought you've seen every use case out there for SolidWorks or 3D modeling, go ahead and add learning how to weld to that list. Thanks again to Wade Larson for taking us through it. Now, I'm sure many of you watching the broadcast today are veteran users of SolidWorks. And as you might know, October is the time of year when we traditionally see the new release of our favorite desktop CAD application. And this year is no different. So I'd like to introduce senior applications engineer, Nikki Stagic, to walk us through some of the biggest enhancements to SolidWorks 2023. Hello, Nikki. Thank you for joining us today. Hey, Damon. Thanks for having me on. Now, I understand this year you and the team decided to put SolidWorks 2023 to the test by creating a new design for a Hawkridge Systems chopper bike. What did you uh, find useful as you were walking through the model? Yeah, we wanted to do something cool this year with the D2M mo theme in motion and wanted to build the chopper. You know, we built, we spent a lot of time building like the handles and the frame, obviously. The engine is, is obviously the major portion of it, but also the rear wheel, you know, with the rim, the rub, the tires, the sprocket, the, uh, the spokes, everything had to be included. And so we ended up using some of the enhancements for SOLIDWORKS 2023 that we want to quickly kind of discuss. So we're going to take a look at the top 2023 enhancements we want to cover quickly in this morning session with you. For the parts feature, let's get started. Our favorite one in this genre was actually to allow library feature errors. <laughs> okay, that I think that's going to catch some people's attention really quick. How would an error message be an enhancement to SOLIDWORKS? I know. So in the past, when you try and add a library feature in and something wouldn't work, it just would prevent you from not even allowing you to continue forward. But this way, if the message comes up, you're actually now able to manually override the problem that might be at hand instead of trying to go back in time and see where it is. Because sometimes you know exactly how to fix it right away instead of having to go back. So it's not a showstopper anymore. No, exactly. So now we continue with our design. And in the next batch here are some of the enhancements that we saw is in the sheet metal genre. So we'll take a look here. One of the big things in sheet metal were the sensors. Now you can put a sensor on a sheet metal body that can actually standardize your stock material so you stay within the range or the limits of the length or the width or the thickness of that sheet metal part. And we also now, the, probably the most exciting one in this thing, is the gauge size added in the cutlass properties and we no longer have to add it in manually. So, big one here. So if you're creating a bomb, that custom property is already available in the part. Sounds like the, the sensors might be useful in like a, like a design study or optimization application. If you can optimize for things like the stock size, that, that might be big. Yeah, you can standardize it as a part template from now on if you do a lot of sheet metal work. And now we're going to take a look at Assemblies 2023. This is probably where a bulk of the enhancement happened and one that we are most excited about here at Hawkridge, which is the big one here is the Repair Missing Mate reference, which is able to actually automatically fix a mate. Once you bring in a new component, you replace something in it. There's a one click and easy button that actually updates this and tries to fix the error for you in the mate section. That, that seems huge. That's, that's a bold statement by SolidWorks. I mean, did, what was your experience trying to use that? Did it really repair all of the mates when you like change a part and you know break a face or something? Yeah, so when we were building the chopper, we found that sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't, but it's always nice to have an extra thing trying to fix something for you instead of you trying to do it yourself. So we really liked that one that was added in for the year. The other one that we were really excited about is the automatically optimized resolve mode. It's able to actually automatically switch between lightweight mode and resolve mode for us instead of us manually changing it over. And it's also improved the performance of loading in large assemblies. That's a big one. I'm a big fan of large design review, but it doesn't do everything right. So sometimes that's a, it's a tough decision, right? Do I do lightweight mode or large design review? So anything that can automate that seems like it'll save time and just kind of one less thing you have to think about. Yeah, and we found out that actually opening up the files in SOLIDWORKS 2023 increased the time at 150%. So uh, we're going to keep playing with that, but that's a pretty major number for us that we were really excited about. And then the last bit here in the assembly section, you can also now in an assembly save individual part files as step files. In the past, you were only able to save the assembly as a step file, which is a really great way to communicate if you need to send your assembly over to somebody else. And it's actually the kind of recommended way for large assemblies to do that in. And now we're going to take a look at the drawings 2023 SOLIDWORKS. This is also one of the exciting enhancements that have been made. 
the one in this genre that we were most excited about is being able to filter your bombs. So you can filter with your columns as you select it, you can use it. And then what's also nice about this is you can select multiple things within to filter it out through multiple columns to filter in or, and then also at the same time, the drawing with the balloons on it will also automatically update those balloons at the same time. So you can create your different views in multiple sheets and have it more simplified and more easier to read that drawing. Okay, so customizing bombs. And did I see that there may be an enhancement to, to tell you when somebody has modified a bomb as well? Yeah, so there's kind of like, you know, in the past, somebody might have left you an Easter egg and then you didn't know if they manually changed the text. But now we can visually see with the colors that you can automatically see that text that has been changed. And it only shows up when you actually click on the bomb. Otherwise, it stays exactly in the same color as, as you want it to be standardized. So that was really great. Seems like there's been a lot of focus on on the drawings this year. There's, there's one more I see about top 10 SPR enhancements. Yeah, top 10 SPR. So the big one here that I'm actually most excited about, and I talked to many customers in the past about wanting this, is having non-circular items in whole tables. So that's a major game changer for us. And so you can take a look here. If I just click and select to create a whole table, it will recognize the rectangular cuts, the slotted cuts. It will include all of those in the table now, which is just, it's so simple, but it's so exciting to have it now. Slots and rectangles. Yeah, centered. It will find, it will try and find the center of it and put it in. So, I mean, if it was a top 10 SPR, a lot of users must have been asking for it out there. So, that's always good to see. Looks like there's been a lot of enhancements this year focused on the stuff we do every day design, making drawings. What about some of the other tools in the SOLIDWORKS portfolio that are not related to CAD? Yeah, so not everyone's a CAD designer, or they are, but they do other things on top of it. So, let's take a look at the enhancements for SOLIDWORKS, simula SOLIDWORKS Simulation 2023. The big one in this genre here is the penalty stiffness contact for contact. So in this case, for interactions in your simulations, you might be focused on the overall stresses acting on the entire body, so the direct transfer of the load. Or in other cases, you are really interested in the contact interaction or what the stresses are acting on it. And that usually takes a long solver time to do. And so now we have a slider available in our studies that allows us to move the priority here, do we want to focus on the entire model or do we want to actually look at those contact stresses in this case? And the other one kind of related to here is the bonding interactions are also improved for what they call non-touching faces or you'd say non-parallel faces. And so the faces can actually be at an angle at each other to a certain threshold and it's still able to recognize that as the bonding interactions uh, with gaps in it. Seems pretty big. I mean, yeah, interactions are always one of the things that takes the most time in simulation, right? Setting them up and then especially solving it. So yeah, if you can like deprioritize, you know, some area, which is just a load transfer area, I'd use that, definitely. Yeah, and we're always trying to fight our accuracy versus our solve times. And last but not least here for this morning, we also want to briefly mention PDM. Um, you know, the PDM, this update, we really found it was for the admins, which I usually call the wizards behind the curtain that magically make everything work for the rest of the design team. And so they're going to really like the 2023 enhancements for PDM. So one of the things, simple one, is just automatic admin login. So you just log in once in the morning, not twice. And they can also take a look at the visibility of the rights inheritance for the group permission. It'll kind of pop up nicely and they can clean it up. And the big two kind of that we found for 2023 PDM is also seeing the performance enhancements when it comes to height latency issues with our archive and database servers, including also the traffic encryption. So data security, always the most top priority when it comes to our IP data. That one seems big. When we talk to customers, you know, especially when we're trying to help them implement PDM, they keep telling us that that's how they want to use it, right? Either cloud hosting or uh, a setup with remote users. So anything that can like reduce those security concerns and latency concerns, that's going to let people use PDM the way that we know they want to use it. So thanks again for sharing that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I will say, the first time I learned SolidWorks was in my aircraft design lab. I was using Pro-E and I couldn't figure out how to make an aircraft wing. So when I got to SolidWorks, I was just stoked about the loft feature. I never imagined uh, mates fixing themselves, or hybrid mesh modeling, or uh, having this like worldwide community of CAD users that you know has grown up around SolidWorks. I think sometimes people even use the word SolidWorks to mean mechanical design. So uh, it's really encouraging to see SolidWorks continue to develop this tool. Right? They they know how big of a community is behind it, and it's encouraging to see them like make it work in and fit into this larger world of cloud storage and simulation and these other tools. Thank you again for the update, Nikki. Thanks for spending some time with us. Yeah, thanks, Damon. Thanks for having me on this morning. Speaking of other technologies, we'd like to give thanks to our partner, DriveWorks, for sponsoring that 2023 What's New segment. DriveWorks is a powerful automation tool 
that helps SolidWorks users create and manage configurations for custom ordered products. Their, their software helps to automate the design process with the use of forms, which eliminates repetitive tasks and errors and enables the delivery of those products in record time. If you'd like to learn more about DriveWorks or see a short demo, we'd invite you to visit their booth in our digital conference platform where the team of Mark, Oliver, and Maria will be answering your questions live. Well, we're quickly reaching the end of our morning session at this year's D2M, but don't worry, we still have hours of content ahead. Next, we'll be kicking off the first hour of our block of breakout sessions where, among other things, Nikki will be presenting a deeper look at what's new in SOLIDWORKS 2023, along with her colleague Nick Eglowitz. We'll also be running sessions on electrical design, FDM 3D printing from Mark Forged, and a few case study projects showing the reverse engineering and design processes that tie many of these tools together. At 10 a.m. Pacific, we'll be running another hour of breakout sessions, including a look at what's new in 3D Experience Cloud Design for 2023, hosted by product manager Scott Woods. Of course, the range of topics that our customers are interested in knows virtually no limit, so from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific is this year's return of our Power Hour, where we'll be running eight different condensed breakout sessions on everything from PC hardware recommendations to the latest in post-processing technologies for 3D printing. So if this is your chance to take a quick lunch or coffee break, we hope you'll jump into a session that catches your eye either before or afterward. In the meantime, you can also take a minute to visit some of our digital conference booths, including, of course, the Hawkridge Systems booth, staffed by none other than Hawkridge engineers Garrett Klein, Matt Fisher, and Sean Mars. They'll be chatting about the day's program, they'll be inviting in some of our breakout session presenters, and, of course, trying not to be stumped by the SOLIDWORKS questions that you might decide to throw their way. Also present at our conference are booths for our digital manufacturing partners, HP and Mark Forged. As we've all seen over the years, you know, 3D printing is always changing at a pretty rapid pace. There's always new materials and processing options that can handle the production of basically any part. So if you have questions, be sure to meet up with our team of printing and scanning experts and those from Mark Forged and HP to see what's new and exciting. From 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Pacific, we'll have our final block of breakout sessions covering everything from the design and inspection of dirt bike exhausts to simulating personal exercise equipment. And after that, we'll assemble back here for the afternoon general program, where we'll announce the winners of our prize drawing and where we'll feature some more fantastic keynote speakers, including NASCAR driver and four-time winner of the Baja 500, Robbie Gordon. Our entire Hawkridge Systems team has spent months putting this content together, and we hope you're as excited as we are to get rolling. So thanks again. Let's go have a great D2M in motion.